relatively independent of gram staining shapes and whether things are aerobic or anaerobic. Uh, here's uh, the common uh, clustering of bacterial type infections. Uh, please note uh, they generally follow a systemic approach, but there is not really a totally logical classification. Nevertheless, we're going to go through nine different types of uh, bacterial infections and uh, know that clinically they are generally commonly put into these categories. <coughs> By far, the single most common uh, category are the so-called pyogenic cocci. Uh, you know, even uh, gram-negative bacteria can evoke a purulent reaction, but the cocci, whether they're gram-positive or gram-negative, almost always uh, cause a significant amount of pus uh, in its uh, immune response in the body. And of course, the gram-positive cocci are generally all clinically staph and strep. And then we have a couple of gram-negative cocci here causing uh, meningitis and gonorrhea with Neisseria meningitides causing uh, cerebrospinal meningitis, Neisseria gonorrhea causing gonorrhea. Staph and strep are ubiquitous. They uh, can infect just about everything. Uh, they can infect uh, s superficial tissue, skin, deep tissue, just about anywhere in the body. And uh, common places for staph are abscesses, cellulitis, pneumonias, septicemias. In terms of strep, pretty much follows the same thing. Upper respiratory infections, erysipelas, scarlet fever, septicemia. So think of the cocci often as being called the general pyogenic cocci as our first category. Second category are the so-called gram-negative infections. And I to me, it looks like almost all the gram-negatives are bacilli. So the term gram-negative infection or gram-negative bacilli are almost, uh, can almost be used interchangeably. And uh, they are the single biggest, most common causes of urinary tract infections, wound infections, uh, abscesses in various places, many different types of pneumonias, septicemias. Uh, and they can exhibit uh, endotoxins. They can also cause endocarditis. And whenever you have a long list of your so-called gram-negative infections, E. coli, Escherichia coli, is always at the top because it is by far the most often indicted gram-negative uh, rod uh, involved in infections in these areas. Klebsiella, Enterobacter, formerly called Aerobacter, Proteus, Serratia, Pseudomonas, Bacterioides, Legionella. These are all uh, in that same general group of gram-negative uh, bacillary infections. Let's talk about a third group, the so-called contagious childhood bacterial diseases. Uh, Haemophilus influenzae is probably the single biggest cause of meningitis, upper and lower respiratory tract infections in young children. Uh, another contagious childhood disease, Bortella pertussis, causing whooping cough. Corny bacterium diphtheriae, causing diphtheria. Uh, a very, very uh, strong, uh, destructive upper respiratory bacteria. If you wanted to take our uh, fourth category as the so-called general enteropathic pathogens or enteropathic infections, you think once again of E. coli causing a wide variety of conditions, Salmonella, Shigella, Vibrio cholerae causing cholera, Campylobacter, uh, these are all enteropathic bacteria causing a wide variety of uh, gastroenterocolitis. If you want to talk about the s fifth category of bacterial infections, we'd have to generally talk about the clostridial infections. Clostridium being uh, a gram-positive uh, rod, gram-positive bacillus, is a cause of tetanus, clostridium tetany, 
botulism or food poisoning from Clostridium botulinum, a wide variety of gas gangrene uh, infections from Clostridium perfingens and Clostridium septicum, and probably if you have gas gangrene, it's uh, generally considered to be clostridial until proven otherwise. And finally, cl clostridium, <laughs> clostridium difficile, which is the uh, uh, indicted in most cases of pseudomembranous colitis. And this is also known as antibiotic induced colitis caused by people that are on a wide spectrum antibiotics suppressing most of their normal gut so uh, Clostridium difficile overgrows, produces a toxin, causes very severe inflammatory necrotic changes in the colon, which we'll get to in another chapter. Oh, I don't know what uh, number we're on. I guess we're on number six. But you have to remember that there is a, a large category of bacterial infections, which are called zoonotic, simply because it involves another species besides man in the life cycle of these bacterial infections. Most of them are uh, bacillary. Uh, some of them are probably, yeah, I think they're almost all, you know, s some are, yeah, it looks like they're all uh, bacilli. So if you hear of somebody having anthrax uh, normally, uh, there's probably a, uh, another animal in the life cycle that's been involved, unless it's been terrorist. Uh, if you hear about uh, listeria, probably one of the most common causes of placental infections, as well as meningitis, uh, that's uh, usually another animal involved. Yersinia pestis, the flea and the rat causing bubonic plague, tularemia, a wide variety of uh, uh, wild animals. I think uh, rabbits is probably one of the big ones, but I think there's others. Brucellosis, caused by brucella. Glanders and melioidosis caused by Burkholderia organisms, also involved with secondary animals. Leptospirosis caused by Leptospira. And Borrelia recurrentis causing a disease called relapsing fever. Perhaps we're more familiar or may wind up seeing cases of Borrelia burgdorferi causing Lyme disease, you know there's a tick involved in that. Bartonella, Henselae, causing cad scratch disease. Spirillium minus causing rat bite fevers. But without, you know, feeling like you have the need to memorize all this stuff, let's just suffice to say that all zoonotic bacterial infections involve secondary uh, animals besides man in order for man to get the infection. and it's also a fortunate that a lot of these diseases, uh, the names of the diseases correspond to the name of the uh, bacteria. Some of them don't. But the bottom line is, from the point of view of what we want to say now in this chapter, I think you should recognize all of these diseases as being zoonotic. And that's why I'm showing it. Okay, maybe we can get into our last category here. These are the bacteria which normally do not stain gram uh, positive or gram negative too easily. They are generally identified by other methods. For example, the mycobacteria are identified by an acid fast stain or a z classically a zeal Nielsen stain. And of course, tuberculosis is the big, big, big disease there. But there's a variety of other mycobacterial infections like leprosy being caused by mycobacterium leprae or the wide variety of atypical mycobacteria involved in uh, other infections, much of which are in immunosuppressed patients as well. I think you should know that uh, actinomyces and nocardia are caused by bacteria which uh, are similar to uh, fungi. And then we have our treponomal diseases as well. We'll uh, continue this uh, in the next group. Thank you very much.